Christmas, Happy New Year's Eve to one and all from all of us here at the EIB Network. We're doing Open Line Friday today, folks, because it is Open Line Friday. It's the last day that I'll be here live during the busy broadcast year. So I want to start. Robert in Houston, I'm glad you called. You're up first today. First caller sets the stage. A very important responsibility you carry. So make it count. <laughs> Thanks, Rush. Merry Christmas. Same to you. Um, I had a theory on the uh, tax bill getting done. Uh, basically, these bills don't start right away, so they've been working on this bill for quite a while, and uh, it really picked up steam in the last month. And I was thinking the uh, Russia probe, uh, they were talking about impeaching Rush, impeaching Rush, impeaching Trump over the summer. They would like and, to impeach uh, me, too. I mean, you're, you're right about that. You're right to include yeah, me. I, if they could, they would. Yeah, probably. And... Um, but now that the uh, Russia probe and the Mueller investigation has turned, all of a sudden the uh, Republicans are working with Trump. And I think there's a correlation there because uh, um, the, uh, they didn't seem to be very warm to him over the summer. But well, you've, you know what? You've, d- you've accomplished it. He came through. This is an excellent point. It was a point that I was going to make later on the program, which is why I decided to take his call first, because this is definitely relevant. What is it he's noticed? How many of you have noticed that in the last, maybe it's a month, two or three weeks, that the Republican Party elected officials in Washington seem much more willing, eager, and cooperative to work with Trump? Have you noticed it? How many of you saw the party up at the White House earlier this week after the bills had passed in the House and Senate? Trump sent some buses down there to Capitol Hill. Members of the House and Senate got got on the buses and went up to the White House, and they had a love fest. How many of you saw senators and members of the House heaping praise on Donald Trump that you never thought you would see? And in fact, when watching it, some of you might have wondered, did they really mean this, or are they just sidling up for the photo op? The things they were saying were genuine. Lisa Murkowski, they were all talking about this happening because of Trump's leadership. They all gave him credit for it. They all thanked him. Look, the Republican Party, this has been a crazy thing. You and I have scratched our heads trying to understand it. The Republican Party has been acting like they're in the wilderness. They won. The Republicans won the Senate. They won the House. They kept the House. They've got the White House. And all year they've been acting like they're in the wilderness. They've been acting like they didn't win anything. Been acting afraid of the media. Embarrassed of Trump. It seemed that they were more aligned with the Democrats on some things than with the Republicans. And we chalked it up to the fact that they were all insiders And they were banding together to get rid of Trump and deny Trump's success. And I don't doubt there was an element there. But here's the thing that Robert is dead on right about. Well, he's 85% right. The reason why the Republicans in the House and Senate, and this, this may stun you. The reason why the Republicans in the House and Senate have warmed up to Donald Trump the reason they now appear to be happily and eagerly on his team is because they now think that the Trump-Russia collusion charge is bogus. Robert thinks it's because the Democrats are becoming vulnerable to this, but that's, that's a factor. But the truth is, folks, and this is, I can't tell you how frustrating this is to me. Many Republicans and all kinds of conservative media types have believed this Russian allegation charge. They've thought there's something to it. And you know why? Because they can't believe that the FBI could possibly be corrupted and turned into a political weapon for the Democrat Party. They just can't believe that would happen. They can't believe ditto the CIA. So all this talk of the Trump dossier and all this talk of collusion with Manafort and Michael Flynn and Donald Trump Jr., many Republicans were scared to death that there was something there. 
all year long. I and frankly, you know, I, I'm naive about a lot of things. To me, there's never been anything there. To me, this is the whole thing is a hoax. From day one, in my mind, intelligence guided by experience, common sense, critical thinking, whatever you want to call it, this whole thing to me has been a political opposition research project. And I have never doubted that from the first day I heard about this. And then the Trump dossier hits and it's so obviously made up. It's so obviously bogus. But, and I thought most everybody with half a brain could see that. They didn't trust that. The Republicans in Washington, the Republicans on Capitol Hill, they were tiptoeing around this because they thought there could be something to it because they just couldn't believe that all of these people could be so complicit in a totally made up lie. CIA directors, FBI directors, deputy attorney generals, deputy FBI director, they just, and I got to tell you, when I found it, I was, I was livid and I'm still livid about it and more than a little bit amazed. Most of this year, they have thought there was something to it. Most of this year, they have thought that Trump's going to be impeached because of it. Most of this year. And then you turn to anywhere in conservative media that's inside the Beltway, blogosphere websites, and you'll find 75, 80% of them believe it still. And there's nothing to it, and there never has been anything to it. I think... The tipping point here is the Republicans in the House and Senate now finally have arrived at the belief that this whole thing is much ado about nothing and may, in fact, be a greater threat to the Democrats if the truth of this is ever known. And I think that's why they've warmed up to Trump. I think they've warmed up to Trump because they're more confident they're not going to be able to get him. They've warmed up to Trump because it's taken a year, but I think a number of them are finally getting it that all of this is bogus. Remember, they're all part of the establishment. They're all in the club. And they think the loftiest things of the club. I mean, the club wouldn't corrupt this, wouldn't corrupt that. Don't laugh at me, folks. If you think that I'm whistling Dixie here, I'm not. I think many of them have had come to Jesus moments, if you will staggered over the course of the last month. The tax cuts always been the tax cuts, always been worth supporting. Why didn't they? Out of the box. Obamacare repeal has always been worth doing. Why didn't they do it? Why didn't they seem eager to do it? Why didn't they try to advance any of the Trump agenda for the first nine months? It all made sense. And it was all things that if it were any other president, they would have done. They didn't do it because they thought Trump was going down, because they thought there might have been something to all these allegations. Remember, these people believe the media. They don't look at the media the way you and I do. Look at Bob Corker. Were you not shocked when Bob Corker admitted yesterday what he admitted? Bob Corker admitted that after all these years in the Senate, he finally has seen media mendacity for what it is. And what did it take? It took the media lying about him and then impaneling analysts after his appearances on TV to trash him for things that didn't happen, that he knows didn't happen, that he knows they know didn't happen. After all of these years, but specifically this year, after this year of hammering Trump, he finally got a dose over one and a half days of what Trump gets all day, every day for a year. And he had an epiphany. These people believe more often than not what's in the media. They believe Trump colluded with Russia. Or they think since th there's no reason for all this talk to go on if there wasn't something to it in their minds. Very frustrating to me. Because to me, this is so obvious a conspiracy between the Democrats and the deep state and the media, which is all basically the same thing. But they have just now come to the reality, realization that maybe, maybe Trump didn't do this. And so it's now making it easier for them to warm up to him. And that is what has happened. Let me put it a simpler way. 
Republicans in Washington didn't know if Trump was going to end up being Nixon or Reagan. And they feared he was going to end up being Nixon. Because they feared that he was guilty of all this stuff. Because they can't believe the deep state and the media and the FBI and the CIA would make anything up which should tell you what they didn't suspect and didn't realize about the Obama administration. It's one of the reasons why we're so frustrated. Anyway, they have finally arrived at the conclusion that most of this is bogus and that it is okay, that it is safe to join Donald Trump. That basically is what happened. Mitch McConnell says he's warming up to Trump's tweets. He said he's not been a fan of Trump's tweets up until this week. And now he's starting to like Trump's tweets. I think that's true of many more Republicans as well. Something happening here, folks. And greetings to you music lovers, thrill seekers, conversationalists uh, on a cross. The Fruited Plain, Rush Limbaugh here at the Excellence in Broadcasting Network. Live from the Southern Command in sunny South Florida, it's Open Line Friday! So the Trumpster lands at Palm Beach International Airport, which is actually in West Palm Beach. And he got mobbed out there. There was a mob of supporters. This is a first. Well, there's always been supporters when Trump's arrived at PBI, but this this appears to be a first. This is a massive, massive crowd of supporters. And I mentioned that uh, Mitch McConnell just, it's, uh, NBC News is reporting that Mitch McConnell just said he's beginning to like Trump's tweets. That he hasn't, he's been, he been nervous about him most of the year. He hasn't really liked them, but this past week, he's starting to catch on. He, he's starting to like these tweets. Now, some of this is winning. You know, winning is an elixir. It's uh, it's a magic elixir. It cures so many things. Whether you're talking about a, uh, a sports team in any league at any level, from a bunch of kids in the league up to Major League Baseball or the NFL, politics, the same thing. Any anything in your personal life where where you win, it just it has this aspect to it that wipes out so many nagging negative memories, feelings. It actually, has a magic elixir to it. The reason Trump is getting all the credit for this tax cut victory is because it's justified. And I, I don't want to be misunderstood here. I'm, I'm not. This is not a gratuitous hit on Republicans in Washington, House and Senate elected Republicans. But if you look at things from their perspective, if you go back to the campaign, they never thought Trump was going to win. And, and honestly, most of them probably really didn't wish he would anyway. He wasn't any of their first choice. There were 16, and Jeb was probably the choice of the establishment Republicans. And so when Trump wins, I mean, it it just turns everybody's world in Washington upside down. And the Republicans especially were expecting to lose. They really thought Hillary Clinton was going to win and that they were going to, to be nothing more than an opposition party, that they would have a majority in the House. But that's where they would have to try and stop her. But they were set up for a purely defensive posture. That's how they campaigned. That's what they forecast for themselves. In, in nobody's wildest dreams was Trump going to win. So that mindset sets in. Trump wasn't going to win. Then Trump wins. I mean, let's, let's compress this story a bit. Trump wins. And immediately, the Hillary camp, which means the Democrats and the media, immediately begin this focused effort to destroy Trump, I think they were trying to actually prevent him from being inaugurated. I think their efforts during the impeachment were designed to do something that would prevent him being inaugurated. And it's been relentless. This entire year has been a relentless, unstoppable effort to destroy Donald Trump, to destroy his political career 
to destroy his professional career, to destroy any possible success as a president. It has been focused. It's been intense. There hasn't been a moment of let up. And the Republicans in the middle of this for much of this year are also afraid that this collusion story is true. They could. They didn't think he was going to win. How the hell did this happen? Everybody's asking them, how did this happen? So the Democrats launched their collusion theory. And I think we have learned enough to know that many Republicans thought there was something to it or could be. And one of those reasons for that is that they trust these institutions. They can't believe that the FBI would be so corrupt as to literally live outside the law to destroy somebody. And even if it was, it was in the service and the interests of the country. This guy, this, 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 this reprobate, this, this pig, this, yuck, this guy is just not one of us. This is just unacceptable. That, that's been the Republicans' attitude, too, for much of the year. And we're now learning all these never Trumpers are writing how they're, they're so mad after this tax cut passed, they want the Republicans to lose next year. Let me read this to you from Max Boot. I mean, I spent my entire life, my adult life as a Republican. I worked as an advisor on three Republican presidential campaigns, but now I'm actively rooting for Republicans to lose the congressional elections next year. Because the Republicans have shown that they are unwilling to uphold their oaths of office. They are unwilling to defend the Constitution against the nonstop threats emanating from Trump. And that, to me, trumps, so to speak, anything else, including concerns about tax cuts or any of these other issues that a lot of Republicans tell themselves are the most important thing in the world. So here is somebody that three presidents have trusted to hire to advise who's openly seeking the Republicans' defeat, his own party, after the success of the tax cut bill. He's not alone in the never-Trumper world. And they have been like this the entire year. And their upset with Trump has been that, if you really boil it down, what they've really not liked about Trump is that he's been advancing their ideas. And they just can't stand it. Some guy that's as big a pig as that. Uh, this this reprim- this womanizing, narcissist, reprehensible barbarian thinks like I do. Well, that's just unacceptable. And so what I believe in can't win if this guy is the standard bearer. That's been their thought process. Now, these people, by virtue of this, are telling us that the enemy to them is not the left. And as such, they are worthless to us. If they don't see the enemy to this country and the American way of life as the Democrat Party and the American left in this worldwide global movement, then they are worthless to us. But I want to get back to this past year and the Republicans expecting to lose, shocked to win, not believing it, thinking it may have happened with collusion. So the repeal Obamacare was half-assed at best. They were afraid to do it. What if Trump does get impeached? Oh, my God, the worst thing can happen. Trump gets impeached, and we take something away from the American people that they really love, so they didn't try to do anything. They slowed it all down. They roadblocked it as much as they could. But Trump kept at it. He got up every day, went to work. He kept strategically slicing and dicing the Democrats and the liberals. And to this day, they are unaware. And I better not say this too loud. And I don't want anybody to repeat me, okay? I don't want you telling a soul what I'm going to tell you next. Donald Trump every day is dismantling brick by brick. Door jam by door jam, the mansion that is American liberalism. Every day, a little bit of that mansion gets chipped away. And it is strategic. It is being done on purpose from deep in the bowels of the White House, behind the scenes where nobody can see it. Everybody's distracted by Trump and his tweets. 
but much of Obama's administration agenda is being erased and reversed. Donald Trump is fighting a strategic, daily, ongoing war and battle against the American left. I don't care whether he thinks that he's taking out liberalism or whatever. In his mind, he's restoring greatness to America. And whoever's in the way is who's in the way, and they're going to get taken care of. They're liberal Democrats in his mind. I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. He's out to make America. I just think his ideological education is uh, expanding. So we end up, and all during this year, the Republicans, all these tweets, oh, my God, he's embarrassing us. What is all, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. And you look at the, the grabbed her what? Oh, no, I can't believe we're going to vote. Ah! And they're going through all this. But through it all, Trump triumphs. Through it all, at the end of every day, Donald Trump is still the focus of virtually everybody in the world of politics and most of the people in the country every day. And through it all, Donald Trump doesn't crumble. And through it all, Donald Trump doesn't cower in fear. And through it all, Donald Trump is never afraid of the media. Through it all, Donald Trump is calling them fake news. Through it all, Donald Trump has taken them off their game. The Republicans are watching all this. And at first, it's making them nervous as they can be. Oh, my God, I can't believe they're going to really hate us now. There goes my Washington Post profile. Oh, my God. But now, and even before the tax cut bill passed, there has been a change. And the Republican Party is happily on Donald Trump's team. And it's genuine and it is real and it's based on substantive things. And one of those substantive things is, hang on, a wrong number keeps calling me here. Everybody calls me is a wrong number because anybody I know would never call me. Through it all, what they're realizing is that Donald Trump will win. And they want to be part of a winner. And there hasn't been anybody in the Republican Party, elected Republican Party, RNC, you name it. There hasn't been anybody who has inspired winning. There hasn't been anybody charismatic. Hey, I want to be on that guy's team. Hey, I want to be with them. That is beginning to happen now. Everybody needs leadership. The number of natural, genuine leaders in any group of people is very, very small. Leadership's not something that can be taught. Leadership, in many cases, is a personality characteristic that you either have or you don't. People either want to follow you or they don't. But there are some things leaders have in common. Trump has many of them. Fearlessness. Conviction. Confidence. And full knowledge of who his enemies and opponents are and how to deal with them. The Republican Party probably has now been talked out of the silly notion of joining the Democrats on amnesty, hasn't it? Wasn't so long ago that that was something the Republicans wanted everybody to know. That they were for amnesty because they didn't hate Hispanics and they were for civil rights. I don't think they're still occupying that position. But even before the tax cut bill passed, certainly after it, but even beforehand, it was clear that Donald Trump is going to be who he is. He's happily who he is. And it dawned on these people that Donald Trump is actually focused on their political enemies. Look at so many awakenings that we've been made aware of this. Bob Corker apologizing essentially to Trump now understands what Trump deals with every day with the media since it happened to him. Mitch McConnell, I'm starting to like these tweets. The tweets are effective. Yeah, Rush, but I don't think he needs to do these personal assault tweets. I don't don't like those. Maybe not, but. The tweets where he gets his side of the story out, the tweets where he tells the truth about the Democrats, the media doesn't, invaluable, folks. 
nobody, not nobody, but very few would know if Trump didn't do this. This is a long way of saying, and of course there are going to be interruptions in this, but it's a long way of saying that something is happening. Something is happening that's good, that is causing unity in the opposition to the American left. Unity in opposing the Democrats. Unity in the striving to restore the great institutions and traditions that have defined our country's greatness. There is a, a unity in making America great again. There is a unity in putting America first in the sense that it makes the world a better place at the same time. And right in there with the Republicans, who we yesterday saw and Wednesday saw in genuine support and admiration for Donald Trump, because he's the guy who did this, and they all said so. They had to do their jobs. McConnell and, and Ryan had to do their jobs, but Trump had their backs, and Trump knew when to stand out of the way and let them use their expertise, as opposed to during Obamacare when he's still getting his feet wet on how the legislative process works. In this instance, when he was needed, he was right there. Guidance, advice, energy, when he wasn't needed, backed out, let McConnell and Ryan do their thing. Everybody had a hand in the victory. Lisa Murkowski gets Anwar drilling. We all get Anwar drilling. We all get this silly climate change, Paris Accord blown to smithereens. We all benefit from net neutrality being ripped to shreds. And the American people are starting, the non-Trump voters, despite what you're going to hear in the media, despite any polling data, I'm telling you that the American voter who's maybe voted for Trump and ambivalent and people that didn't vote for Trump, like our last caller who apologized, that's bubbling up out there too. There's something happening and it's good. With that, a brief timeout, and we'll be back. Don't go away. By the way, folks, there's there's one other factor in the in the Republican unification behind Trump, not just on the taxes. And this is a key. I mentioned it earlier in the program, and that was such a great monologue, and I I neglected to include this point in it. So we'll edit this part into it at RushLimbaugh.com. Fundamental to this unity is the belief by a growing number of congressional Republicans that the Mueller investigation is bogus. Let me better say it, that the idea that Trump colluded with the Russians is caca. More and more Republicans are beginning to accept that this is BS. Now, the stunning other side of that is, for much of this year, a lot of Republicans in the House and Senate thought there might be something to it, and that was another reason why they kept Trump at arm's length and didn't work hard to advance his agenda. I mean, some did, but I mean, the whole party didn't, as, as, as compared to now, where there appears to be all this unity in making America great. Part of it was they were scared to death Trump was going to get thrown out. They were scared to death the Democrats had the goods. They were scared to death that Mueller was going to come up with something to impeach Trump. But something is... Something's changed now, and I think many Republicans are beginning to realize not only is there nothing there, but that the real action might be the collusion between the FBI, the DOJ, and the Democrats, particularly Hillary. 